dinking. Yes, I'm talking about one of the most iconic, specific, and unique shots to the sport of pickleball. And it's so important that if you don't do it well, you're probably gonna lose every single game you play. Okay, I'm just kidding. It won't make you lose every single game you play, but having a consistent and aggressive dink will undoubtedly help you win more games and increase in level in the sport of pickleball. That being said, I made it my mission to learn one of the most aggressive dinks I see in pro pickleball, and I'm talking about the forehand topspin dink. I wanted to see, is it just pros that can do this or can I actually replicate the form and technique and learn this shot myself? So let me just take you guys back to when I started playing pickleball. Now, I found that dinking on my backhand felt pretty easy, I felt pretty consistent, felt pretty accurate. I wasn't a pro by any means, but it didn't feel difficult. But all of a sudden, like, my forehand dink just felt so inconsistent. I felt like I was always hitting it in the net or popping it up. And it kind of made me not even confident to get in a cross court dinking battle because I just was scared I was gonna make some kind of mistake. So ultimately I just got so frustrated to where I'm like, okay, I need to do something about this. So I thought of a lot of the pros that I thought had really good dinks. And I thought of pros like Catherine Parento or Anna Bright or Anna Lee Waters and all three of those pros have a really good forehand topspin dink. It's really aggressive and it feels like they can just place it anywhere. It feels like there's even disguise to it. And I just thought to myself, man, like what the heck is the secret sauce? Clearly they're doing something that I'm not. And I wondered like, is there a world to where I can dink like Catherine Parento? So I took it to the lab to find out. And by that, I mean, I studied some footage. <laughs> but what I found here was very interesting. So I started pulling up some previous matches with these pros. And what I found is that a lot of the times these specific pros will hit an aggressive topspin dink with their forehand when they're in the correct position. Now there's a lot that goes into it, but there were three components that I saw over and over again when I was studying how these pros hit their forehand topspin dink. And it has to do with contact point, body positioning, and swing path. Now, when you put all of these together and all these components, you get this really nice, aggressive, heavy, heavy topspin dink that tends to cause a lot of unforced errors or pop-ups from the other team. So I took note of all of these things to see if I could take that to the pickleball court and hit a heavy forehand topspin dink like these pickleball pros. Oh, hey, if you're watching this channel, it probably means that you really like pickleball. And if you really like pickleball, you probably wanna get better at it, which means you should enroll in my free Mastering the Dink video series. What's gonna happen is you're gonna click the link below and I'm gonna send you one video to your inbox every single day for the next 15 days with a tip that's going to level up your dinking. Now back to the video. If you don't know what contact point zone is, it's really just the point at which the paddle strikes the ball. Now in most shots in pickleball, you really wanna be contacting that ball in the correct contact point zone. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Really, if you think about it, it's just being in your ready position and think like you have an invisible line coming from your hips to your knees, feet, all the way out like a V from your body. You really wanna contact every ball in pickleball in that contact point zone because you're going to be the most balanced and most consistent from that area. Now what's special about this top spin forehand roll dink is that most of the time when I watch the pros hitting this shot, they're hitting it not only is it in their contact point zone, but it's directly almost in the middle area of it. So it's not in front of the knees. Um, it's more directly in front of their torso. So think belly button kind of area. So when they're hitting this shot, they're positioning their body to perceive where the ball is bouncing to strike that ball in the middle area of that contact point zone. So that's something really important that I saw again and again when I looked at footage from the pros. So now that you know about contact point, I wanna talk about body positioning because this is really what sets you up in order to get that contact point in the right spot. So something that I noticed over and over again with the pros is they're moving their body in order to see where the apex of the bounce is. 
Apex is really just a fancy word for seeing the highest point of the bounce. So a lot of times when pros are hitting this shot, they're hitting it either at the apex or when the ball is decelerating from the apex. Now, in order to do that, you need to move your body behind where that ball is going. You need to perceive where it's bouncing, where it's gonna come up so that you can get behind it and hit that ball. One of the biggest mistakes though, is a lot of times there'll be some unforced errors if you're simultaneously stepping back and hitting at the same time. So that's what's really important about this shot. You really need to have some sound footwork and get yourself to the spot beforehand. That way you're not hitting and moving at the same time. You really wanna stay balanced and you really wanna make sure you're perceiving where that ball is. And then obviously you wanna recover back after you hit the shot. Another tip that's gonna add a lot of consistency to this shot actually has to do with your balance. And one of the key things to help with your balance on this shot is actually to utilize this opposite arm. So one of the mistakes I see a lot of times is people will just keep this arm straight or like they're kind of carrying a purse or something and they'll only move their swinging arm. But the problem with that is when you're doing that, now you're kind of off balance because this one's just hanging out. So instead of keeping that there, I want you to utilize that opposite arm. A lot of times you'll see that the pros will kind of bring their arm out and that's to add balance, which really aids in consistency in this shot. The next thing I want to talk about is the swing path and the paddle positioning. So the thing about topspin is it's really a brushing motion on the ball. So I want you to think of your paddle face starting at about a five, six o'clock on a clock. Okay. So you're going to have your paddle tips starting down. I kind of like that five o'clock a little bit better. And then that motion is going to go from five o'clock clock all the way to like two o'clock. Okay, so it's really this brush motion on the ball. Now, what's gonna really help you get a lot of that motion is actually using your legs in that shot. So again, you're starting at that five, six o'clock and then brushing up on the ball to that two o'clock. That's gonna really be the key to adding topspin to this dink. Now, where you're striking the ball actually matters too. So if you think of the ball and pretend there's an equator, like a line right across the middle. So if you think of this like the upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere, you wanna be hitting the lower hemisphere of the ball because that's what's going to add that spin is brushing the bottom of the ball and coming over the top of it. So it's really important when you have that paddle at that five, six o'clock, you're touching that bottom of the ball first, that's where you're striking and then coming up, that's what's gonna be adding the spin. So those seem to be the basic mechanics of this shot. Now it's really important for me to kind of let you guys know that you can't hit this on every single dink shot, okay? You really have to choose the right ball, meaning that you have to be in position, you have to be balanced, you have to see the apex of the ball and not be moving while you hit it and hit the bottom part of the ball. So you really have to pick the right dinks. However, when you do it and you execute all these steps, you really do get an aggressive top spin dink. All right, you guys, I'm going to show you a drill that's going to help you learn how to hit this dink. I call it the apex drill. How it starts is you're going to start just straight across with a partner at the kitchen line. You're both going to be right at this non volley zone line and you're going to be hitting dinks. Now the whole goal is to understand where the apex is and that you're striking either at the apex or as it's decelerating. So at the top of the apex, so the highest point of the bounce, I want you to say out loud, apex and after that then you're able to hit the dink however you're not able to hit that dink until it hits the apex so that's going to be the drill we're going to show you guys how this looks okay so i'm going to be starting with me and my partner we're both at the kitchen line working on the top spin every time the ball gets to the apex i'm going to say apex and that's going to release me to be able to hit my top spin dink again i'm working on that swing path making sure that i'm starting at that five six o'clock going all the way up to that one, two o'clock.
So something I want you guys to notice as I'm doing this drill is actually my feet. I'm constantly moving in order to adjust where my body is because I'm really looking for the apex of that bounce. I'm constantly either moving backwards, forwards, side to side, really making sure that I'm giving myself enough time to let that ball get to the highest part so that I can contact it still in front of my body. This drill is all about footwork, so make sure that you really focus on this when you're trying this out. So that's kind of how it goes. Now, as you can tell, when that ball bounces very low, it's very difficult to hit this shot and you really have to increase that follow through. So just be really aware. Those are things that you'll start to learn when you're doing this drill. Now we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna go cross court. As you can see, for some of these shots, I'm almost completely off the court. Again, I have to do that if I'm wanting to hit this shot because I have to make sure I wait for that apex. Again, very important. You can't hit this shot on every single dink you have. And if you do, and you do have to pull yourself out wide, you have to make sure that you practice recovering back to that middle part of the box. That way you're not caught off court and you leave your partner hanging in a game. So again, this is a really great drill to help work on your footwork, work on hitting the shot and then recovering back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.